Hey everyone, this is Dan with another episode of my Moderna and BioNTech videos. The prices of Moderna and BioNTech have increased a lot in the last few days. Some people are saying that Moderna and BioNTech are looking more and more like Tesla. I actually did a comparison among the three stocks and found something very interesting. Let's get into the details. First, let me review my price targets from my last video that was published on July 29th. At that time, I set Moderna to be at 360, BioNTech at 330 by the end of October 2021. On that day, Moderna closed at 345 and BioNTech at 312, and certainly the prices moved a lot closer to my target, actually already exceeded my target. And as of yesterday market closing, Moderna was at 386 and BioNTech was at 351. And also this morning, Moderna went up even more. And same with BioNTech. And then yesterday around noontime, I increased the target for Moderna to 400 and BioNTech to 370. Am I going to set new targets for these two stocks in light of the Tesla phenomenon? I will explain more. Let's look at this chart. This is a chart that nobody has done before, none of the stock analysts. What I did was that back in January, I predicted that the price trajectory of Moderna and BioNTech will follow the trajectory of two very well-known pharmaceutical companies, and they are Regeneron and Mgen. I predicted that the trajectory will follow this shape, which is based on the number of days after the FDA approval of the blockbuster drugs of these companies. Back in January, Moderna and BioNTech were right at this point, pretty much down on the bottom. Since then, it has gone up to this point, and looks like my prediction is still pretty much true. And if the prices continue to follow this trajectory, within about 15 months, the prices of Moderna and BioNTech will at least double, or probably even triple. And that's certainly a very exciting possibility. At this point, if you are interested in what I've been saying, I'd like to encourage you to click the like, subscribe, and notification button so that you'll be notified when I publish my next video. And it will also encourage me to make more videos like this in the future. Thank you very much. Let's continue. Let's talk about a Tesla phenomenon. If you look at the chart for Moderna, this is the weekly chart for the last two years. Certainly, the price has been going up and up, and it's gone parabolic in the last few days. If you look at the relative strength ratio, it's at 87, extremely high. Typically, at this level, you would say that the stock is overbought, but this is Moderna, and it's not an ordinary stock. Same with BioNTech. It's been going up and up, gone parabolic in the last few days, and RSI is 86, almost as high as Moderna. And as of this morning, they've gone in the higher. RSI at this point is probably closer to 90. Now, if you look at the general market, the ETF SPY reflecting the price movement of the S&P 500, the highest it has ever been for RSI in the last two years was 79. And that was right before the pandemic crash. And then the price after that crashed about 30%. Certainly, it never went as high as where Moderna and BioNTech are today. How about Tesla? Here's Tesla. In the last two years, the RSI for Tesla went as high as 94. And then subsequent to that, it went to 84 before this dip, which is relatively small. And then it went to 83 before this drop, which caused Tesla to lose about 30% of its value. Therefore, it is not going to be surprising if in the next few days, we see a drop from Moderna and BioNTech. But for now, as long as still going up, I'm setting my trailing stop limit orders. So I'm enjoying the ride as long as still going up. And hopefully the limit orders will trigger at the right moment to protect me from a potential 30% drop or more. Now, if you say from a fundamental perspective, are Moderna and BioNTech any better or worse than Tesla? I looked at the P ratios quickly. Of course, all three companies have been losing money for quite a while, and then they only started to make money in the last few quarters. Therefore, it's not easy to calculate their price or earning ratios. I used the latest quarter for Moderna, BioNTech, and Tesla, and then look at the current market cap. 
And based on that, I calculated this version of the PE ratio. And it turned out that Moderna is at only 34, BioNTech only 20, whereas Tesla 156. From these numbers, I would say that Moderna and BioNTech are probably on even more solid footings than Tesla. And of course, Moderna and BioNTech, some say have a relatively short runway because they are really just benefiting from the COVID vaccine. But then of course, Moderna has a very strong drug pipeline. BioNTech, the pipeline is not as strong as Moderna, but I'm pretty sure they will come up with something really good. And the new drugs will be generating good revenues for them within the next two, three years. So I'm very, very bullish on Moderna and BioNTech at this point. All the discussions about the Tesla phenomenon, I think that's a distinct possibility. And that's why it has influenced the way I've evaluated Moderna and BioNTech. I'll talk a little bit more about that in the next few minutes. At this point, I'd like to remind you that I'm not a financial advisor. I share my stock trading strategies and analyses for educational purpose only. If you want to sell or buy stocks, you should make your own decisions and you should definitely consult with your financial advisors before you do so. Let's continue. Let's look at some of the important recent events. On August 3rd, that was yesterday, Moderna received the FDA fast track destination for one of the new products they're developing, which is a vaccine to help people against the RSV virus. This virus particularly affects the infant and older adult and could lead to death if it's not properly prevented or treated. And currently this vaccine is in phase one study with this fast track destination, I would say probably it will get at least the interim approval, hopefully within a couple of years, because it took Moderna only one year to fast track from phase one to interim approval. So I would say two years is probably a very conservative, very reasonable time frame for this RSV vaccine. Once that's approved by FDA, of course, then it will generate a steady revenue stream for Moderna. President Joe Biden said yesterday that U.S. has already delivered 110 million vaccine doses to 65 countries by way of donation. Overall, based on the World Health Organization, 11 billion vaccines will be needed to vaccinate 70% of the world population. That's why there's still a huge demand out there for more and more COVID vaccines. And I explained in my previous videos that comparing with all the other vaccines, the BioNTech vaccine and Moderna vaccine are the most effective ones against the new variants, especially the Delta variant. That's why a lot of new orders are converging to Moderna and BioNTech. And they are conquering a lot of the market shares from the other vaccine makers. And that's great news for investors for BioNTech and Moderna. This is a list of the various vaccines already donated by the U.S. I won't go through each item. Basically, the U.S. has been donating millions and millions of doses of BioNTech and Moderna vaccines. So U.S. is not trying to pinch penny. U.S. is not trying to buy any cheaper vaccines for donation. They are going for the best, and that's good business for both companies. The FDA is expected to give full approval to the Pfizer vaccine by Labor Day, and similarly, it'll be the same for Moderna. Recently, Taiwan ordered 36 million Moderna vaccine doses, and you probably already heard that Thailand also ordered Pfizer vaccine, same with UAE and, and Bahrain. Basically, at this point, many countries are ordering the best vaccines available, which are BioNTech and Moderna, instead of going for the less expensive vaccines because of the consideration of effectiveness against the new variants. And that's, again, good business for Moderna and BioNTech. As of August 1, it was reported that Pfizer and Moderna have actually increased their prices for the vaccine sold to the EU. And that's great news because that means Moderna and BioNTech really have the pricing power at this point because of the effectiveness of their vaccines. We have some other recent developments. For example, China plans to use the BioNTech vaccine as a booster shot to complement the vaccines developed by China. UAE and Bahrain, they are offering Pfizer-BioNTech as booster shots. And United States already bought additional 200 million doses of BioNTech vaccines. The U.S. government also bought 200 million more doses of Moderna vaccine. And of course, as of July 21st, Moderna joined 
the S&P 500 index, which caused a major jump in stock price for Moderna. And as of July 15, it was reported that the FDA expects to approve COVID vaccines for kids under 12 years old by midwinter. Let's look at the analyst opinions. I'm comparing the analyst opinions today with the opinions back about a month ago on July 8th, 2021. I've highlighted the changes with yellow background. First of all, yesterday's closing price was 386 for Moderna. My target was 360. My new target is TPD. I'll talk about that in the next few minutes. Yahoo has not changed anything. Louis Navalier, the same rating overall, an A rating, which is very favorable. TipRanks.com, still a moderate buy rating. And they increased their high target from 246 to 353, increased the average target from 192 to 218, and keeping the low target at 100. And CN Money increased their high target from 246 to 353. That's quite a jump. That's quite a jump also for tipranks.com. If you look at BioNTech, yesterday closing price was 351. Yahoo, same buy rating. Increased the high target from 238 to 255. Average target also increased from 194 to 200. Low target from 107 to 108. Small increases. Tipranks.com, actually they downgraded BioNTech from moderate buy to hold. But the high target went from 240 to 400, quite a jump. And the average target went from 184 to 217. And then CN Money, keeping the whole rating, the high target went from 238 to 400, and the medium target 199 to 201. Overall, we see the increases in targets for both Moderna and BioNTech. Let's look at my own valuation of the companies. This is the chart I showed in the video that I published on July 29th. In that video, I came to the conclusion of a new target of $370 a share to be achieved by the end of October 2021. And I mentioned that I used a conservative number for the total number of doses produced for 2022. I used 2 billion doses when a company said they're planning for 3 billion doses. And the net margin, I used 33%. Whereas a quarterly report was pointing something towards more like 50% or higher. As of today, what I'm going to do is I'm going to revise some of these assumptions. First of all, I will increase my net margin from 33 to 50%. Why? That's because based on the most recent quarterly earnings reports, Moderna has achieved a net margin ratio of actually 63% whereas BioNTech has a net margin ratio of 55%. So I'm plugging in the 50%, still conservative compared to the actual net margins. Also, I increased the number of doses from 2 billion to 3 billion for 2022, and also increased a little bit the number of doses for 2021 and 2023. I adjusted the prices based on the pricing strength of Moderna, and from these new numbers, I arrived at the following stock prices for 2021, 22, and 23. And from this range, I decided to select the price of 250 for my new target for now to be achieved by the end of October 2031. As you can see, 450 is a very low number compared to this range, and that's why it is still a very conservative number. As the price gets higher, I will most likely revise my target upwards. So stay tuned to my Twitter messages and I will update you as I revise my targets. Either I will publish a new video or I will send a Twitter message to alert my subscribers. Let's look at BioNTech. This is what I showed in my July 29th video. And I came to the conclusion of $330 for new target back then. Today, similar to what I did with Moderna, I'm revising some of the assumptions. With a net margin assumption of 50% and 2022 production of 4 billion doses, as well as increase in the doses for 2021 and 2023, and the new prices that I assume, I arrive at the following prices for 2021, 2022, and 2023. And from this price range, I decided to set a new target of $420 a share to be achieved by the end of October 
2021. Again, a surprise goes up, I will most likely revise my target upwards. Let me recap my target. Moderna at 450, BioNTech at 420 to be achieved by the end of October 2021. If you compare my new targets to the targets set by the analyst, you can see that for Moderna, my target being 450 is higher than everybody's targets. With BioNTech at 430, it's also higher than everybody's targets. Do I worry about it? No, I don't worry about it because this will not be the first time that I'm ahead of the professional analysts. I'm confident about my targets because I've done the calculations, I've studied it, I've done the research. I think these two targets are going to be imminently achievable. So if you already bought Moderna and BioNTech, just enjoy the ride. I'd like to remind you to subscribe to my Twitter account, which is DAN Market L. In addition to subscribing to my YouTube channel, for example, yesterday I tweeted my subscribers saying that I'm raising my target from Moderna to 400 and BioNTech to 370. Of course, today I raised the targets even more. And on July 29th, I tweeted that I bought additional shares of Moderna and BioNTech. I'd like to remind you to click the like, subscribe, and notification button if you like what you've seen so far. As usual, I will very much welcome your comments, suggestions, and questions. Thank you very much. This wraps up my video for now. I will chat with you again in the next few days. In the meanwhile, I'd like to wish you the very best of luck with your financial investments. Have a wonderful day. Thank you.